What's going on, guys? Zephanix here. And you know, like every year, we go ahead and give our three, you know, our our thoughts on the three um, conferences. So let's go ahead and start off with the uh, Microsoft conference that just happened right here. Uh, as I usually do, I go ahead down the list and just kind of read off what I um, saw and gave my impressions of it. Um, so start off with Phil Spencer coming out. And funny thing, from the very beginning, he acknowledged the existence of Sony and Nintendo in the press conference. That that's I don't think it's ever been done. I don't think um, Sony nor Nintendo has ever kind of made knowledge of the other one in a press conference, you know? I'm just saying, it's just kind of funny. Anyway, so uh, he also acknowledged the fans, which is a very Sony thing to do, very good. Um, and so he started going. First of all, he started off with Sledgehammer Games, Call of Duty, Advanced Warfare, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really care. Um, so he went ahead and um, I'm, I'm just saying, no, I shouldn't do that. Okay, so he did Call of Duty Advanced um, Warfare and uh, Warfighter, rather, or Warfare or Advanced something. Uh, be perfectly honest with you, Call of Duty is not really my type of games, but uh, nonetheless, it did seem pretty Call of Duty. I don't know what to really tell you about that game. Um, you know, it was pretty much like the, all the trailers of Call of Duty games. The world's going to hell, tormenting it upset, um, lost without a something with no way to, to go back. I was standing all alone, but now I'm not alone because I got a team with me. Anyway, uh, moving on. Who knows where those lyrics are from? Let me see if we, let me find out who knows where those lyrics are from. Anyway, moving on. So Forza Horizon 2 um, was announced. Uh, and basically, it's like uh, Microsoft's answer to Drive Club, which isn't a bad thing. Um, basically, it's a racing game, open world racing game where you have the ability to go ahead and make multiple clubs and go ahead and race club versus club or something like that. That's actually not a bad thing. It's also coming out September 30th, which is surprisingly close for a game that we didn't really hear about until recently. Uh, moving on. Um, they also talked about... Um, uh, evolve, which looks great. We only saw a small little tippet of trailer. Uh, we saw they have a whole bunch of different classes in there, so it actually looked pretty good. Um, one game I am excited for, Assassin's Creed Unity, which will, in fact, have a multiplayer co-op um, um, assassin team, if you will. It looked like it's only going to have um, a four-player assassin team, four-player co-op, if you will, which most games do, so, I mean, that's not really a bad thing, excuse me, especially since uh, in the past, they've only had, when they actually did have the co-op ones, which was like, you know, little small missions, it was only three, so there you go. Um, a small trailer for Dragon Age Inquis um, Inquisition, okay, fair enough. Um, just a small little tip of trailer, nothing big. Exclusive. Um, Sunset Overdrive trailer explained the situation. The plot was basically that a sports drink would turn everyone into mutants, which was funny because if you read the X-Men comics, it was like the opposite um, where it was actually uh, a sports drink was killing all the mutants. So it was kind of funny. Anyway, it's going to have um, the regular gameplay as we already saw, but it's also going to have an eight-player co-op um missions as well. It's going to be released on October 28th of this year. Very good. Xbox is getting some games. Um, Dead Rising 3 is only going to, is going to have, it looks like exclusive DLC. I think that's what they're referring to. Um, it looks like even the crowd kind of laughed because they was like, maybe they didn't get the notice or something like that. I don't know. Um, but you know what? Yeah, I saw that. Um, I'm, I'm saying that because Dead Rising 3 was just announced for, um, for, for PC as well. Anyway, uh, moving on. Um, Another exclusive, Disney's uh, Fantasia Evolve, which is supposed to be some dancing game um, for that. And instead of announcing the dancing game, like showing us a dancing game, they also went ahead and took that time to tell us that another exclusive, which is this, this both the games coming out this September, uh, Dance Central Spotlight is actually coming out too. So overall, it's actually not a bad thing because Dance Central um, is actually a very fun game and um, that's going to actually sell some systems because I know a lot of people who actually do like Dance Central a lot, okay? I'm just saying. Um, moving on. Exclusive. Fable Legends. We already know about the four, um, it was a four-player co-op demo. We already knew about the four-player co-op thing. Um, it's going to have a multiplayer, um, uh, beta this fall. Um, it also kind of talked a little more about you being the villain. The last trailer that we saw last year talked about being a villain again, but this time it really showed you how, uh, how it works. So basically while four people are actually playing, you can have one person, uh, I'm believing on the second screen, um, uh, with the second screen experience on, um, you know, uh, on, on Windows 8, where you get to go ahead and kind of 
do what you got to do. You know what I mean? So I think, um, which is basically kind of set certain enemies here or certain traps here and things of that nature. So that's actually pretty cool because basically it makes it so like literally every turn of the dime, you're actually, something's actually having differently. Something's happening differently. You're changing up. You know what I mean? It's like not every game is going to be the same. So I'm kind of down with that. Um, the, um, the, the graphics were actually pretty good, especially the effects. Um, well, the graphics were fabulous and put it that way. So in terms of fable, which is supposed to be like a, like a stylized graphics, it was pretty good for it. Um, the best part was when she actually, she used the ice magic and the ice magic, uh, the way it looked was just really nice. So there was that. I really did uh, like that one. Um, it also talked about four characters that were actually going to be in the game. Um, but they, they kind of talked as if there were going to be more than actually four characters. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that one. Um, they also talk about project spark. Um, I've been be uh, better testing this game for a while now, and uh, I gotta say, I absolutely love it so far, and the fact that they're adding more to it, it's actually really good. Um, they're adding now, um, not just kind of like uh, medieval stuff, but now they're going to go ahead and add um, space stuff as well. And the reason why I say this game is good is because this is one of those games where you can actually go ahead and play it, and it depends on how good the creator is, how good your game is going to be. Because you can actually, like, the game is literally uh, a canvas for creating a game. You know what I mean? If you thought, and put it this way, if you for some reason thought that uh, Little Big Planet was a good camp for creating games, you don't know. You haven't seen nothing yet. Seriously, the game is that good. Um, but what surprised me was Cronker actually came out there and they said the Cronker character would actually be in Project Spark. So I think what's going on is that um, the guys, they're actually going to create a Cronker game inside of, Projects, um, inside of Project Spark which actually is pretty good, like I said before, because of how the actual um, gameplay is. I'm looking forward to it. And there's some other games that, keep in mind, there's other games too for Xbox. Yeah, I'm actually looking at one right now. Uh, I can't see exactly what it's called here, but it looks like it's going to be, oh, it's a new, oh, it's a new Tomb Raider game. Looks like it's going to be a new, um, remember Cradle of Life? Apparently it's going to be a new Tomb Raider game like that coming out. But anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, so they also talked about, um, Ori and the Blind Forest. I thought it was a very artistic game coming out in um, 2014. Awesome. Um, now, they did talk about next year coming out with Halo Guardians. But what they said that was coming out this year, which really got the crowd excited, was uh, Halo Master Chief Collection, which we kind of knew. Um, it's coming out November 11th. It's going to have Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4 all on Xbox One. Now, this is actually pretty cool because of the fact that um, I didn't beat Halo 4. Um... And, um, what was it? I didn't beat Halo 4, nor did I beat Halo 1, but I did beat Halo 2 and 3. So, I mean, it's kind of nice to kind of go back through it and play it again. So, I'm going to be looking forward to that. Um, allow, um, let me see. So, it's going to allow you to go ahead and jump into, um, uh, multiple games. But it basically means that if you want to go ahead and do a mission on, like, say, a, a cool mission on, on um, Halo 1 and then jump to Halo 4, you can. Jump back to Halo 3 or whatever. You can do all that. Also, um, they said that Halo 2 is going to get a graphical upgrade and all of the original multiplayers um, will go ahead and be back into the game as if, it was, as, it, as if it never left. Now, this is a good part. The reason why this is so good is because this will sell systems, okay? Remember, there were a host of people who did not want to go ahead and stop playing Halo. They actually kept playing Halo 2 on the original Xbox because they loved it so much. I'm talking about thousands of people, people. So this is going to be a good, um, it's going to be a really good system seller right here. Microsoft was very smart to do this. Um, 1080p, 60 frames per second, dedicated servers, all um, all through it. It also comes with a Halo Nightfall, which is a new series, which begs the question, how much is this shit going to cost? I kind of noticed that they didn't mention how much it's going to cost, but yeah. Um, also, with this is coming the Halo 4 Guardians beta, which they did give us a little look into, and it looks like the, the new Spartans are actually going to look like football players, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, whatever, but still. Um... So Spencer returned out there, and he basically said that uh, everything that we just talked about, with the exception of Halo Guardians, will be coming out this year. Which, okay, that's a really good thing. Then, wow, that's a that's a really good thing. I got to say that um, because that was a lot of games to cover. Um, so in 2015, they said that they have a lot of other games coming out here. Uh, one of which was uh, from the Crazy Limbo, a game called Inside, which very much reminded me of a game called Out of This World, which was um, a game currently on a PC as well as um, on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And hey, look, next gen apparently just got an Xbox One today. Um, sorry, just noticed that. 
Um, and what was it? Um, oh, Genesis and Super Nintendo. Okay, so moving on. Um, some guy with a lisp came out and said the word rad. I was kind of surprised he said the word rad. By that, Xbox probably lost E3 because he said rad. Um, now, he announced um, ID at Xbox, which is basically a way for people to go ahead and kind of push their games towards Xbox and whatever. Okay, so a um, couple of games um, that they did mention um, that's coming out through this one. Uh, White Knight, Earthlock, um, Cuphead, which is old, which is like, like a game with old cartoon graphics. I, I thought that was really strange. I'm going to have to check that out. Hyper Light, Senseless Planet, Slash Dash, Fru, um, Loves in a Dangerous Space Time, Mighty Number no. 9, Graves 3, Phoenix Rage, um, and a whole bunch of other games too. So pretty good. Uh, a world premiere announcement trailer of Tomb Raider, which is called The Rise of Tomb Raider. Okay, fair enough. Um, the Witcher 3 actually had a demo. Uh, to be honest with you, I never really played The Witcher. I have Part 1 and Part 2, but I never really got to play it yet because it's on my list of games to play. But yeah, so with this being said, I'm like, okay. I might have to go ahead and actually um, get this game too because it does look pretty nice. Kind of look like Dragon's Dog when it be perfectly honest with you, which isn't a bad thing by any means. Um, they also announced that TJ Combo was going to be a playable character in the new Killer Instinct game. Okay, that's also pretty cool as well. Um, let's see, what else happened? Um, he also announced that a new, an old um, franchise was coming back. Uh, and at first he thought he was talking about Cameo. But he actually was talking about the Phantom Dust, which, by the way, is actually a pretty good game. I remember that game. So it's actually on uh, Xbox Live Arcade's most wanted list. So um, that was definitely a good move by um, good move by Microsoft as well. Um, Tom Clancy's the, um, the the was it Division? I think it was called. Um, at first, I didn't know what to make of it, but then as I started playing it, I realized something. It reminds me a lot of Ghost Recon: Future Soldier, which by no means is a bad thing. So um, that's definitely going to be a game I'm going to pick up. Now, as a surprise guess, which really shocked the hell out of me, I guess we got our answer to one question that we were asking: if um, Nintendo was going to go ahead and buy um, Platinum Games, apparently it's no because the the um excuse me the create uh, the creator the the owner of the gums of the um company um 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 Hideki Kamiya came out and you know he basically said that he, they were making exclusive for Xbox so uh, it was a game called Scalebound which kind of reminds me of a uh, Digimon game meets I don't know uh not really sure what to make of it just yet it's like a pet game but at the same time. Yeah, it's a lot going on there. So I don't know really what to say about it just yet. Um, we're going to keep our eyes open. It was a real big surprise. So I guess we know that Nintendo will not be buying it. Um, they also said another um, exclusive is coming out. A recreated game of Crackdown, which will have co-op multiplayer and regular multiplayer. So I actually remember Crackdown. A very fun game to play. Um, Spencer returned again and said that um, this holiday season may be the best place um, to play is Xbox One, and he actually may be right, because I was really surprised about how many games they an actually announced, and the games were actually decent. I mean, I, I gotta say that. I was really impressed about the amount of games that was there, and how decent these games were. So, uh, overall, I think that um, they, they brought the games. They brought the games, and not, not one time did they stop. They literally kept bringing the games back to back to back, and, you know, you got a small little breather. You say, who saw? And you went right back to action. You know what I mean? So, I mean, overall, I got to say, Microsoft brought it. You know, a lot of people were saying Microsoft was going to bring it. A lot of people was hating on Microsoft. I got to say, haters, you've been exposed because Microsoft really bought it this year. Now, um, I got to say, I'm looking to find out what Sony is going to bring um, now, too, because um, I did go ahead and pick up a PlayStation 4. And I'm going to go ahead and do my review on it. I don't know when I'm going to do my review on it, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah. So, I'm going to be doing that real soon. Also, um, if I got to give it a rating, um, as I usually do rate the games, I got to go ahead and rate... I got to give it a... Hmm, I got to give it an A. An a you no? Know? I got to give it an A. And the reason why I give it an A is because they really did. They didn't They didn't just bring it. They brought the exclusive, which was nice. It wasn't a lot of exclusives, but they did bring some exclusive. They brought some surprises, um, announced new game announcements. They brought a lot of great stuff there. So overall, I got to say, man, it was a real good. Um, Microsoft really did well. This might have been their best E3 ever, to be perfectly honest with you. It's not really saying much as uh, this is the same people who did the whole um, fist bump thing, but... 
Yeah. <laughs> we So far, this actually may be their best E3 ever. Let me know what you guys thought. Microsoft's E3 2014 press conference. You guys have a good night. Zeph out.